On this episode of Ghost Hunters International, the team investigates the phantoms of a New Zealand opera house. I saw something. Can Brian's provoking techniques rattle the suicidal spirits? Your theater sucks. You go badass ghost trying to push people around and try to knock people over. I'm right here, dude. What the hell was that? Then the team heads to England to investigate the mysteries of an abandoned mansion. It doesn't make sense. The builders just left. They were scared off the site by something. Will the ghost hunters encounter the evil black dog? Please give me a creeps. Did you see that? This thing's coming. Let us hear that terrifying growl. Let us see those red eyes. Prove yourself. What the hell was that? So we're in Wellington, New Zealand. Yeah, it's great. It's absolutely wonderful to be here. I can't wait for the investigation. All right, I'm going to hand it off to Donna, who's going to tell us what brings us here. Hey, boy. Hey, Donna. Guess what? We are going to the opera. Now, before you get too excited, let me explain. This is an investigation, not a field trip. The Opera House has been a social and entertainment venue here in Wellington since 1914. This Opera House has a proscenium arch. Now, this is an arch that frames the stage between the audience and the performers. Now, the interesting thing about this arch is that the construction was supervised by architect Albert Liddy. And he died in the Opera House. Another story regarding the proscenium arch is that supposedly it's sort of a curse area. There have been several physical accidents that have happened to performers and technicians near and about the arch. So the arch is thought to be a place where people have gotten hurt and people seem to associate it with the death of Liddy. All right, I'm going to hand it back to Rob. All right, guys, this is it coming up on the right. So uh, let's get in there. Hi, Pat. How are you doing? Rob. Yeah, nice Rob, to meet good you. to see you. And I'm Andy. Hello, Andy. Brian, how you doing? Brian, nice good to meet you. I'd like to uh, find us. I managed to get in touch with Mr. Liddy. Could you tell us about the history of it? It was built in 1913. It seats about 1,500 people, which is quite a big theater for its time. And we understand that you've had some paranormal occurrences here. Oh, yeah, we have. Can I take you backstage? Oh, that'd be terrific, if you wouldn't mind. Okay, follow me. Right, well, here we are on stage, and you're looking out at the auditorium, as you can see. The central core to the apparitions and things that, that occur here is a belief that the site architect called Albert Liddy killed himself, and that he did it in the theater. He was just a person who was sent here to, to oversee the construction of the theater, and something went wrong with the design of the building. The story goes that he hung himself. Over a relatively short period, about six months, three bad accidents occurred in the theatre. And what's more, they all happened in exactly the same place, right there. In this box? In that box, yeah. Well, Andy, you know where you're going. Yeah. <laughs> You mentioned that there's some paranormal activity that you can see the spot from here. It was late one night, and our house electrician had to go all the way up to the gallery. Suddenly, he appeared in the doorway, white as a ghost. And I said to him, Tom, what the hell's the matter? And he said, somebody brushed past me in the gallery stairwell. And we were the only people that were there. When I was the custodian there, I often had the feeling that there was someone up in the auditorium watching what I was doing. One night I'm standing here with uh, one of the cast and she said, is this theatre haunted? And I said, well, it, it could be. And she said, chap who haunts this place, is he short and balding with glasses? And I said, well, it could be. <laughs> and uh, she said, well, he just walked across the gallery. I'd like to see some evidence, um, perhaps. What motivated Albert Liddy to take his own life? And what was the fault, if any, that he found in the theatre? Oh, okay. Hi, brother, you ready? Thank you. So what do 
we got? Well, we got camera one here. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Right. Then this is the camera over on the left side of the stage, and it's viewing the right side of the opera house. Camera three is on the right side of the stage, viewing that way. I got all the seats, and I got the balcony where that dude was missing. Where all the accidents happened. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. All right, all let's right. get the lights out. Sweet. Sounds good. Good deal. CVP thing? Yeah, it's cool. It's yeah. already rolling and slated. EVP stands for Electronic Voice Phenomenon. It's a noise or sound that we did not hear with our own ears at the time of the recording. Is there anyone here that would like to communicate with us tonight? If there's someone here, can you please give us a sign? We were up there just kind of doing our thing and Brian decided that he wanted to start provoking. I hear you don't like people that talk bad about your theater. You know what, your theater sucks. How do I put it? Brian's provoking skills, if you were a ghost, it's like getting a root canal without an overcane. The worst theater I've ever seen in my life. I've seen better theaters in a the ghetto. You go badass ghost trying to push people around and try to Knock people over. I'm right here, dude. Come on. You get anything, B? Something. What is that? Me and Dustin and Nandy work on the catwalk. We decided to do some EVP work. I was taking a bunch of pictures. Snap, snap, snap. About 30 or 40 of them. You get anything, B? There's something. All of a sudden, I get this big black mass uh, that's like kind of like coming off of Dustin and enveloping Andy. Keep asking questions. What's your name? Can you tell us who you are? Can you tell us who you were? So now you're showing yourself to us. You won't come back out and play. Hmm. Surprising. Not too many places to hide up here. What the hell was that? And they stay right there. Was that you that just made that noise? While we were trying to do the EVP session, we did get a, a bang in one of the walls. And it's always tough in theaters to isolate audio and try to figure out what we're picking up on, but we'll have to, you know, keep our eyes on it and see, uh, see what else we can get. All right, guys, get out of here. Let's get the light next round. Right. Barry Dunn and I came up to the balcony, the third row of seating up at the top. We did have a story here of someone seeing a man run across the entire town. That, that may be the light playing tricks with me, but I'm not sure if I'm seeing movement on the stage. So I'm contemplating actually grabbing the full spectrum. 
The full spectrum camera allows us to capture images in the infrared spectrum, the visible light spectrum, and the ultraviolet spectrum in order to see if there's any kind of paranormal activity going on in that spectrum. While Barry set up his camera, Donna and I started an EVP session to see if we could capture anything on audio. This opera house is filled with very vivid memories, I'm sure, from years and years of performances, dramas, ballets. If you used to be an attendee, can you tell us about the time you were here? Barry? Yeah? Can you swing that camera up to my right, which is your left, about two rows below me? Okay. Did you hear something, Donna? I saw something. What did you see? I saw like a flash, mm -hmm. and then another flash. Did you hear anything, the seat move? No, I didn't, I didn't hear anything, but I saw something. It caught my eye twice. At first, I just disregarded it, and then it caught my eye again, and I looked. Did you just take a seat? I saw a bright flash to my right down a few rows. And at first I just thought, you know, it's your eyes refocusing, it could be anything. And then I looked in that direction and I saw another couple flashes. Could you please tell us your name? You've got our full attention. There was no mistaking. It wasn't just like a, a glimmer of something, it was bright. I'm really hoping that Barry caught something on his camera and this is something that the guys can pick up in their evidence review. Are you settled into your seats now? Mr. Fitzgerald, be ready. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Brian, Barry, and I decided we should cover the entire opera house to do an EVP session. So I started out on the stage, Barry took the third floor gallery, and Brian was on the second level. Everybody set? Barry, you up top? I'm up here. All right. Is there anybody here with us tonight? Is there a show playing later tonight? Could you give us a sign that you're here with us tonight? Any kind of noise that you can make? Is that you? Dustin. What's that? Was that you? Doing what? You didn't hear those, those three knocks? I didn't hear it down here. Could you do that again for us, if that was you? When I was sitting in the gallery, um, I heard what sounded like voices coming from the stairwell. Who's down at the bottom of the stairs? Nobody. Nobody's down here. What the heck was that? that. As I went down the stairwell, the lights did come on. We've had investigators up and down the stairs all night, and that's the first time that the lights came on. I didn't see anyone on the stairway, so I decided to go back up to the third floor. Myself? Yeah. There's nobody down there anyway, so... I didn't see anyone on the stairway. I can't be sure what it was I heard, but maybe we caught something on the wireless microphones. This is one tired-looking group. Oh, yeah. 
All right, I think that we have done this place pretty thoroughly. So if everyone's cool with it, I say we get some lights on, get packed up, and get some rest. Sounds good to me. All right, let's do it. Tonight's investigation actually turned out pretty well. Uh, we definitely were able to get something interesting up on the catwalk. Uh, at this point, we need to get back, review it, and get a better look at it, make sure that it wasn't any kind of finger in front of the flash or any kind of camera strap. Hey, Pat. Okay. Well, we are beat. We're exhausted. So I'm sure you must be, too. A little. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So we're going to go home, get some rest, and we'll see you in a couple days and let you know what we found. Sounds good to me. All right, thanks a lot. Okay. See you then. See you then. It's great to have the guys here in the Opera House. I reckon that if anyone can find out anything, these are the guys that can do it. And the fact that they've been here all night, and while they're looking tired, they're also looking, I thought, a bit pleased. So uh, I'm looking forward to what comes up anyway. about to review all the footage from the opera house we have a lot of evidence reviewing a lot of footage we've got a lot of audio footage to take care of um, why don't we just uh make sure that we be very diligent okay let's rock and roll brian i have something here from the catwalk in the opera house now what i wanted to look on obviously because during the investigation i had heard that while you were up there you got a picture uh, that's right i forgot about a, that a, a that's, mass. Right. that's right i just wanted to get a look at those obviously in the bigger screen yeah we can see it there it's kind of hard to determine if if it's really something trying to show itself or if i mean you had a lot of equipment in your hands and stuff. I, had a, I had a flashlight one-handed i was trying to take pictures you know that could be five thousand different things that could be my finger brushing up against the flash that could be like me cupping it it's my fingers are too far out for flash to hit it it reflects off it that could be a camera function yeah we can't put that out there and say that's no. a ghost there's no, no way no. no now that we see it on the big screen yeah very true very true Hey guys, what's up, yeah. Brian, you remember when we were up on the catwalks with uh, Andy? Yeah. He had the mini DV camera. I had an audio recorder. It almost sounds like they're, I don't know, to me it sounds like a female, which would be interesting since Donna wasn't up there with us, but I can't really make out what she's saying too clearly. So, tons and tons and tons and tons of evidence to go through. Yeah, yeah. And you guys made it? Barely. But we did get a couple of very interesting pieces. This is when we were up on the catwalk. It was uh, Brian, myself, and Andy. Andy had the mini DV recorder. I had a handheld recorder. Uh, and Brian had the flash camera. And you will hear on this kind of roughly um, what sounds like a whisper here. I want you to listen to this first, and then I'll tell you what we did with it. OK. Is that you that just made that noise? Yeah, I can hear a woman's voice whispering no. Is that you that just made that noise? Wow, that definitely was not me. Right. You that weren't anywhere near there, right? No. Nope. So I thought it was still a little murky. You could kind of hear no, but I wasn't exactly sure. So uh, Barry was able to uh, match it up on the voice recorder, and uh, you take a listen on there. There we go. All right. Oh, wow. Yeah, you can't miss that one. That's nice. It's interesting that you guys did get a direct response in what's obviously a woman's voice. Definitely. Well, how do we do for research? Well, as far as research, I ended up calling the coroner's office to see if I could verify that Albert Liddy had died in the theater. And actually, he did. He died by his own hand. He took a shotgun and blew his brains out. So this actually did happen there. That is fact. 
That's pretty cool. Yeah, That's some yeah. serious research. They were very cooperative. All right, cool. Well, Brian, if you can throw that EVP on a CD for us, we'll bring it over to Pat and see what he thinks. Not a problem. All right, good job. Okay. okay. Hey. Thanks. So, Pat, first things first, we had some personal experiences that we'd like to share with you. Dustin, Andy, and Brian, when they were up in the catwalk, they heard a loud bang sound. No idea where it came from. Brian exclaims, was that you? He didn't hear any voice respond to him. But I want you to listen and see what he picked up on his handheld camera when we went back and reviewed the footage. Is that you that just made that noise? Play that again. See if you can hear anything there. Is that you that just made that noise? It was two sounds, da da. We listen to this as we're going through and watching this video. And what we heard was a very faint sound in the background. Mm -hmm. And then we remembered, well, wait a second. We had a digital voice, handheld digital voice recorder running at the same time. So we went back, we found the exact same moment, and we wanted to listen to that same thing again. This time it's just going to be the audio. And I think you may be able to hear a little better mm -hmm. the response he gets. Is that you that just made that noise? No. No. That's what we heard. Somebody saying no. Did it sound like a man's voice, woman's voice? Or oh, a woman speaking softly, I would think. The first thing when I heard this is, okay, let's make 100% sure there was no women in that area. So we tracked down Donna, found out that she was actually outside of the theater at the time. So that's where it really became impressive to me for a couple reasons. One, there was no woman there. Two, it was captured on two different pieces of equipment. Three, we know that it wasn't a sound coming in from outside because they should have been able to hear that and four, that it seems to answer a question that was presented. Did you make that noise? No. So even though that is the sole piece of evidence, to us it was still a pretty impressive one. So what does it tell you? Does it tell you that the place is occupied by uh, a being of some description or other? To me, it says that there may be paranormal activity happening in the Opera House. Is it enough by our standards to throw our hands up and say this place is haunted? No, it's one EVP. It's one piece of evidence. But is it enough to say, yeah, it seems like there's something going on here? Yes. And one of the things that also is helpful to us is that we have Donna who is able to do research on all the locations and help us make the kind of connections with the evidence that we normally would find. And she was actually able to find Albert Liddy's death certificate it turns out he went insane and shot himself out back of the opera house. Okay. Well, it's, it's, it's been great for me uh, to see how you guys operate, how professional you are. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, wish you all the best for the, for the rest of the run. Uh, and the same to you. Thanks a lot, Pat. Pleasure. Thanks, Pat. I thought that the evidence that GHI presented showed me how professional they are. Let's go. Rob didn't try to oversell it. He knew there was something there. He showed me the evidence, which was irrefutable, really. But at the same time, he said he needed more to be able to definitely say that, that the place was inhabited by something. Well, here's my thing, Andy. Evidence, not so much. Essentially, one EVP. Well, I mean, we have to admit, though, that that was a pretty good EVP. Pat was a great guy, you know, wonderful host. Pat was definitely a colorful character. All right, well, I can't wait to see what Donna has for us next. So I got the news in the middle of the night that Donna needed to head home. Um, so she headed out about 3.30 in the morning, which obviously leaves us in a tough position. In New Zealand, uh, I had to leave abruptly. I started to have some really bad intestinal pain. I knew something was up. I have had Crohn's disease since I was 14 years old, so pretty much recognized it had come out of remission. The hardest part for me is the emotional part of being away from my little mini family. You know, you, you get to the point where you, 
you do miss them. And uh, I don't want to get too emotional here, but you know, you do get attached and uh, you just, you hope you can get back there. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed and, and uh, my hopes up high. Staken. Donna has handed off her case file to Dustin, who is going to let us know what we're investigating. All right, guys, we're headed out to Winchester Mansion. The 1840s, and it was abandoned by its builders in the middle of construction. Apparently, they were just frightened off. They left all their tools and got out. There's sounds of women talking. There's reports of a black dog are common uh, in these parts. The black dog. Usually they're associated with the devil. Usually it's eyes are that red. The atmosphere comes with the thing. The feeling it gives off terrifies people stiff. All right, guys, we're just about there. Wow. This place is huge. Yeah, this is big. Hey, Chris. Hi, guys. How you doing, Rob? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Chris, I'm Andy. Hi, Andy. Hi, Don. Brian. Hi, Brian. Nice to meet you. Thanks for coming. I was a complete skeptic until I started coming to this mansion. It has converted me to the firm belief that there is a strange activity that happens in this building. Yeah. Can you tell us some of the history about it? Yeah, the building we've got here today isn't the original building. There was previously a Georgian manor house called Spring Park from 1724 through to 1844 when William Lee came up with the Gothic revivalist design. This unfinished masterpiece that you see before you. But that's one of the mysteries, which is why I'm glad you guys are down here, because why is it unfinished? What we do know is that the builders just left. The stonemason tools were left all around the building. They were scared off the site by something. Uh, we don't know what. Come this way. The tools that I mentioned that were left all around the mansion, they've been collected and they're stored in this room here. Has there been activity within this room? Uh, baby's cry is heard from this room. All right, so where are we off to next? Okay, guys, this is the kitchen. We do have paranormal activity here. We believe it's one of the servants who's been seen and heard coming through this doorway, walking across the kitchen, through that doorway, and up the corridor. And very often, you can hear a female voice. Right, if we go down into the chapel. This is another of the mysteries. You can see the stone green man directly above us there. A pagan symbol, so mm. completely goes against Catholic faith. Also, the dogs. Seems like an odd place to put dogs into the ceiling. It doesn't make sense. So has there been activity specifically within the cathedral? Yeah, had an apparition sighted in this doorway. All right, so where are we off to next? If we move on round into the drawing room. I was at the front and I heard footsteps along the first floor corridor. Very clearly, very distinctly, so much so, the person on the other end of the phone said he was coming. But I was actually alone in the mansion and had been for about an hour beforehand. On the grand staircase we're going up now, there are unconfirmed sightings of a little girl running up and down these stairs. The activity that we get up here is a blue light coming from this end of the corridor down towards that end of the corridor. When you come up here at night as well, this part of the mansion does feel a lot more heavy in atmosphere. Where are we off to next? The cellar. This is what we call the vaulted room. The paranormal activity down here is a black cloud and people have visibly disappeared behind this cloud and also strange noises, male moaning, sighing. A black dog has also been sighted running through the corridor. Well, Chris, you've definitely given us a challenge. Thanks for the tour. It's time for us to get set up. One, two, three. Tonight's going to be tough. One person down tonight. As a leader, I want to make sure that I'm helping everyone else out, getting their back as much as they're supporting me. A lot of communication going on. I want to make sure that we're well organized and up to this kind of challenging scenario. Okay, I'm going to show you the cameras now. It's the hallway out of the chapel. That is the chapel. That's the basement. That's the hallway where the door closes and opens for you. And this right here is the attic on the third floor. Good job, guys. All right, let's get the lights out and do it. Well, 
Dustin, if you wouldn't mind joining us for the thermal sweep. All right, so Dustin. Yo. They were telling us that on this stairwell, people have seen a little boy running up and down the steps. The black spot? Yeah. Would there be a hole in the window? Doesn't appear to be. Yeah, there's a hole in the top left corner of the pane. Missing pane? Yep. Good job, guys. All right. After you, Abbott and Costello. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer to think of us as the three stooges, Dustin. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> Excuse me. Creeps. So let's try a session here on EVP. Um, some camera shots as well. All right. I'm going to try photographing with a full spectrum camera. Okay. The lady spirit. This is where she comes out over here. And she'd come in here and get her food and go back up. Okay. I'm going to start with the questions. Recording here down in the kitchen. Is the spirit of the lady that haunts this place here with us right now? We're hoping to appeal to a particular entity that's seen in here. Is there any entity within this area, the area of the kitchens? We mean you no harm. We are only here for research. Did you see that? here for research. Did you see that? Oh, a little streak. It went through the window. It yeah. never sits out of the buildings. Blue streak. Blue? That was weird. I look over and I saw a blue light fluttering and uh, I didn't know what it was. I thought it was outside. It was actually the stairwell right across the way. This is Rob, the basement, where there is supposedly the dark mass, as well as reports of a big black dog running up and down the hallway. We brought a variety of equipment, EMF meter, digital voice recorder, and a handy cam. Try and make sure if there was any activity that we could get some evidence of it. I'd like to have a chat with whatever or whomever is down in this basement. If you want me to see you, I'm waiting. I'm waiting right here to see you. Is that your way of responding to me? Would you be able to make that, that same sound again? meter started going off seemingly in response to some of the questions I was asking. My name's Rob. I don't know your name. Do you want to come out and speak to me? Can you make that noise happen again? It was just kind of back and forth. It seemed like it was answering questions. The only problem was it wasn't answering all the time, so you still got to consider that it could be coincidence. What the hell's in here? This is a strange building. Doesn't make any sense. Why would somebody dedicated to God go to the bother of building a chapel and put in the green man? One of the most oldest pagan symbols there is. Mm-hmm. Tells my eye. Sorry. Yeah, rubber eye. Hey, squeaky eye, see? 
William Lee, we're asking you to come forward to answer some questions. I'm aware you were a devout Christian. Why do you not have any crosses? Did you give us a sign? Something that we know that you're here with us right now. Hey. There's something up there. And I just saw it. I'm watching it there as well. Yeah, this thing's coming. I think I'm gonna need to get some camera shots. Right. Are you the spirit of William Lee? If you are, can you give us a sign? Make a noise. What I need to know is why you built this chapel when it has nothing to do with God. I'll take this in, you take that in. All right. Dustin and I climbed up to the third floor. We separated and went to either end of the hallway. And at that point, I started to flash with some pictures, just digital camera, seeing what I could get. All right, Dustin, here we go. First photo. <laughs> Orbs. Yeah, it must have a ton of them, huh? Oh, all this dust. It's easy to tell if an orb in a photo is actually just a piece of dust. A piece of dust has a well-defined center. It has rings coming off it, almost like a tree stump, and it's not gonna be self-illuminated. It's not going to be giving off its own light. You have anything? All right, I see a blue light towards you. Do you have a blue light on right now? No, but you shouldn't be seeing any blue light. Now it's gone. I did get what looked to be a blue light. It was a little tough because there was a lot of dust floating around, but dust usually throws off more of a white reflection, not blue. Quiet for a second. Did you hear anything down there? It sounded like a woman. It sounded like a, like a wailing. Behind me, off to the left side, I thought I heard what sounded like a, like a high-pitched wailing or moaning uh, female-type voice. I don't know if the camera would have picked it up. I hope it would have. Uh, without Donna, we don't have a female here, and hearing something that sounds like a female voice definitely gives it more credibility. So the only theory I could have is right below us, one floor is where a woman sometimes appears. So I don't know if there's any audio that's uh, associated with that, but I have to play it back in the mini DV and see if anything pops up. Yeah, I had some weird noises in the basement. Bang, EMF meter seeming to respond to questions. But... Right, okay. I came down here into the cellars with Rob because he was having some experiences. And one in particular was the EMF meter was triggering. Uh, it seemed to be corresponding to questions. Okay, Barry and Rob in the basement. We're appealing to any spirit to come forward and make itself known. Who are you? What are you? Show us your power. If you come in the form of a dog, well, that is one of your guises. Let us hear that terrifying growl. Let us see those red eyes. Prove yourself. The hell was that? The timing was impeccable to our questions. We're asking, can you confirm that you're down here? Bam! Door slammed somewhere. We're like, okay, uh, I guess that's a pretty good confirmation. Whether it was coming from this cell or, or, or where, we're not sure. All right, Barry, you ready to call it? Mm-hmm. Well, we definitely got some real different results, so I'm hoping that we have something to really back it up at this point. Dustin and Andy, servants' quarters. We brought our camera, we brought a mini cam as well as a digital recorder. We proceeded to do an EVP session. Is there anyone here that would like to speak with us? Can you tell us who you worked for? Do you feel trapped here? Why do you stay here? Can you tell us your name? Are you here alone? We heard that you like to throw stones. 
Can you throw a stone now? Did you like your boss? We're going to take some photos. We'd love for you to be in the picture. Say something to us. Try to touch us. All right, guys, it's about that time. Let's wrap it up. Okay, we're gonna leave now. This time we we're person down with Donna having to go home and we still gave 100%. So of course now we have to go back, get some rest and go through all that footage and hours of audio to see if there's evidence here. So we'll see you in a couple of days. Thanks, Thanks again, Chris. guys. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Ghost Hunters International is pushing the boundaries on paranormal investigation, bringing the science into the paranormal. And I can't wait to see what the guys have come up with. Really excited. Me and Barry are gonna start doing the evidence review for Woodchester Mansion. We're a man down and Dustin doing research, so yeah. we have to do all this stuff by ourselves. Yeah. Brian, mm. why don't you have a listen to this? Rob is in the basement. Can you say something to me now? We have some freaky deaky stuff going on down in that basement. It is. Brian, I have something of interest here on the full spectrum. Can you remember from the kitchen area, the blue light was seen, the gutter yeah. responses, there was a lot happening around there. And something odd turned up in the top left-hand corner of the shot. That in itself, I wouldn't have paid too much attention to. However, on this, the video footage of Full Spectrum, we also see this object drop. You see it just drop down there. And then moments after that, then you said, did you see that? Did you see that? Dude, it's caught on camera. Yeah, that's right. For the conclusion of Ghost Hunters International, the next Ghost Hunters International at a 14th century medieval mansion in England. This is the most haunted house in Great Britain. An investigation awakens the spirit of the white lady. Who are you? That looks like a head. What the hell is that? Holy sh Why are you still here? Ghost Hunters International, all new next Wednesday at 9 on Sci-Fi. This should be an interesting reveal. I've never thought about going to a client saying, you know that dog you've got? We got its growl. <laughs>
Very strange. This might be a good time to bring in the fact that our researcher, Dustin, who was able to eliminate some of the myth and mystery about the workmen mysteriously just dropping their tools and leaving. Most likely what it was was a combination of failing, help, and of course money was starting to run out. So perhaps they left the tools thinking that it wasn't going to be a long period of time. They might be coming back in a month or so. It just never came to be. That is quite strange. So up until now, we've given you a lot of things to listen to. Yeah. I'd like to show you something that we got that was very interesting. Okay. Now looking at that picture, is there anything that catches your eye? Yeah, what, what have we got there? Mm. That's what we said. Now you had mentioned the stories of the lights moving up and down the hallways. That's right, yeah. What you'll see here is Barry, as well as a cameraman to his left. You see it again? Yeah. Yeah. So that, that light form, what is that? Normally, most of the time, Chris, I would say that's a dust or a bug, but there was more to it. Right after this video was captured, Brian, one of our investigators, says, Barry, did you just see that blue light over there? He goes charging over, he's up by the, the windowsill, and he sees a blue light go up the staircase over here. And Dustin and I were on the third floor. From out of nowhere, I saw a blue light fly through my line of vision. Yeah, well, well again, the third floor on the walk round, I said that's one of the areas where blue lights are commonly seen. I find it very interesting that it's happening in areas that we're asking questions. Yeah. That we're asking for some kind of response. We're asking questions out loud. Can you make yourself call and respond the stories of the blue lights and so many people seeing it these growls the music you know one or two things you could say well gee maybe it was this maybe it was that but you know with this kind of stuff there's there's so much and so to the best of our knowledge there is definitely something paranormal going on here at Woodchester Mansion and I would agree, agree with Rob well, I think you guys have done a great job here at Woodchester Mansion. Thank you very much. And we had a wonderful time doing it. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. Thanks, Chris. The evidence that Rob and Andy have just presented to me is uh, awesome. To have the physical evidence captured by the guys on the investigation is fantastic. I now do believe that Woodchester Mansion is haunted. Well, that was a fun case. Absolutely. Chris seemed impressed to me, and we accomplished what he brought us in for. We solved some of the mysteries, and maybe he started some new ones. We captured a lot of good evidence. Right, absolutely. Good case, well done. I think at this point, we definitely got to get some rest and get back on the road.